Hello you guys. Up until now we have not actually covered the volume of the sphere, but we're going to be today. Okay? So the volume of the sphere, as we see that formula, is going to be where we would take 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. Okay, so up until this point we've not really had to uh, cube a number. Uh, you may probably not have access to the TI uh, calculator at home. But the way to get around uh, that cubing is for you to simply multiply whatever the radius is times 3. Not times the number 3, but you're going to multiply it times itself by 3 times. So again, if I had 2, I'm going to multiply 2 times 2, which would give me 4. 4 times 2, which is that third 2, is going to give me 8. And that would be 2 cubed. Okay? So again, we're going to find the volume of a sphere. Uh, with that particular formula. Now, I have purposely chosen two different examples where we have one picture, one verbal description, because that's going to be key um, in a case of any type of uh, formal examination, uh, standardized testing, um, your last testing for the year for this particular unit. I could it possibly include um, either a verbal description or a picture. Now from the verbal description, as we know, we can always um, draw a picture if you're going to use, or if you're given a picture, of course, all the information is going to be there. So let's look at what we have here. If you notice, we have one line that goes completely across the midpoint or the center of this sphere. We also know a sphere, of course, as a uh, ball shaped, but uh, the technical term mathematically is going to be sphere. As you notice, the black line goes from side to side, as you notice here in the middle here of this sphere. This line goes from here all the way to the other edge. When you have that, you're going to assume that this measurement, 20 centimeters, stands for the diameter. Okay. Now, as we know again, I like to go ahead and put down all of my information. So I'm going to put down my diameter. It is going to be 20 centimeters. Therefore, that means that my radius would be, uh, would be what? You're right, it's going to be 10 centimeters, and then we know um, that pi, in this case, we're going to approximate as 3.14. So let's go ahead and go over to our drawings page. So the information that we have is that we need diameter. We need the radius, of course, because the formula actually calls for the radius. So we're given the diameter to clarify. We have to derive the radius, and we know our approximation of pi that we're going to be using. So the only information that I really need to know is that radius, because everything else is given to us here in the formula. All right, so I'm going to rewrite my formula as always. I'm then going to start simplifying. This is an approximation, of course. Um, so 4 thirds multiplied by 3.14 multiplied by 10 cubed. Now remember the example that I gave with the 2 earlier. Simply taking 10, you're multiplying by itself, by itself, three times. So on my handy dandy uh, college calculator, I can do that by putting in 10 using this button, the 3, and then it's going to give me that it's 1,000. It just has a bunch of places after your decimal, but it's 1,000. Okay, I just want to keep simplifying. So 4 thirds times 3.14 times 1,000. So I know something based on uh, what I've learned before in class and based on previous videos, I can use the power of this decimal to quote unquote multiply by 3.14. Okay, how do I do that? I know that there are three zeros in 1000. So using the power of the decimal being a, um, a power of 10, uh, 1000, I can go ahead and move this over by how many places? I'm going to move it over with three zeros. I'm going to move it over three places. So again, I'm going to keep simplifying. So pretty much when I multiply these two, I can get rid of that. So this now becomes what? 3, 1, 4, 0. Because all that I did is I moved it over 1, 2, 3. So again, if the decimal is there, that's 1, 2, 3. The decimal is now there, or assumed to be there. So all that I have to do now is simplify. Now remember, if you don't have a calculator that allows you to multiply fractions, all that you have to do in this case, I know that if I multiply times 4 thirds, it also means that I'm going to multiply whatever is here in my numerator times the number that's here in this numerator, multiplied by um, uh, this number, or multiplying this number times that number, which is going to be 3. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, So this is just like any other fraction that you would multiply 
3 times 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply this out. So that is 4 times 3,140. That's going to give us, I'm going to do that again just to make sure that I have the right numbers. Nothing wrong with checking. Okay, I thought I had, had a slip of my finger. I didn't. So 12,560 over 3. Okay, multiplying across, multiplying across, I get that. And what is my approximation going to be? Now, I believe that it said that we needed to multiply to the nearest 10. So I'm going to take that number, divide it by 3. That's any fraction. It's going to be 4,186.66. Rounding it to the nearest 10 will be 4186.7. Bringing back my unit. Okay, in this case, my unit was a centimeter, so that becomes centimeters cubed. Okay, box it up, 4186.7 cubic centimeters. All right, now this time, rather than using a picture, we're going to go to a verbal description. All right, you guys, so now we have our verbal description. The verbal description is going to be uh, where it says that thou measures the diameter of a ball as 12 inches. How many cubic inches of air does the ball hold to the nearest tenth? Use 3.14 your, for your approximation of pi. Now, of course, if we are looking for the amount of air that the ball will hold, this is the amount of uh, volume within the ball. Um, gases can be um, um, or are a unit that is um, uh, appropriate to for volume to be expressed as. Okay, so if you think about those cans that you get from the store for your barbecue grill, all of the gas that's inside is expressed um, as a volume, okay? All right, so again, what I want to do is I'm going to write down my information. So I have a diameter of 12 inches. So automatically I know that I have a radius, which is what? Six inches, okay? We know, again, that we're going to use pi, um, uh, 3.14, I'm sorry, as an approximation of pi. Okay, so I have all the information that I need written down, okay? All right, so what I've done, you guys, is I have uh, given a picture description next to the information that's given in the verbal description uh, concerning Val. We know that, again, this line going all the way through is going to represent a diameter, okay? I'm even going to try to test this up with a little bit of color, okay? So we know that, again, the full diameter is going to be 12 inches. Now, of course, we know that we have to derive our radius, which in this case is going to be 6 inches. So let's start solving. Okay, so writing down my formula one more time. There's really no way around this. Even I, as a math teacher, I like to have my formula written down. There's just no way around it. Okay, so now 4 thirds multiplied by 3.14 times our uh, radius, which is 6 cubed. Now, remember, the cubed uh, value is 6 times 6 times 6. If you want to do it on the calculator, if you have a way to do it, uh, that is 6. I'm going to hit my button here. It may not be the same as yours. That's 3 uh, as my exponent. That is going to be uh, 216. So again, I want to approximate my values 4 thirds. And I'm going to move something around. I'm going to tell you why in a moment. Okay, 216 over 1 times 3.14. Now remember, I always stressed efficiency to you. And try to find a way to break down, especially when it comes to fractions, because if people, they, for whatever reason, they just don't like their fractions, okay? But fractions are your friend. So if I know, if we think back to our divisibility rules that we learned in fourth grade or should have learned in fourth grade, if I were to add these numbers up, that's going to give me the number 9, okay? If the number, when you add up um, any number, if it adds up to be a number that can be, um, or that is divisible by 3, so 9 is divisible by 3. That means that I can, of course, divide it by 3. We have a 3 right here. I'm going to try to simplify these numbers. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. 4 over 3 uh, times 216 over 1. We'll see why I rewrote it in just a sec. Okay, so I know if I div uh, 3 divided by 3, because the greatest common factor between these two is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 216 divided by 3 is going to be, and I'll just uh, do it for you here. You can see 216 divided by 3 is going to be 72. So um, this is now 72. I want, again, to simplify one more time. Does it seem like a lot? No, not to me, because I want to make sure that everything is neat. That is the name of the game. I'm going to put 3.14 over 1 also. 
Uh, Mr. Moore, you can't do that. Can't put a decimal over one. Absolutely, yes, I can. Okay, any number over one is still going to be that number. Okay, so I want to show you that if I multiply these all across, so if I take 72 again, multiply that times four times 3.14, that's going to give me 904.32. Okay, so I have approximately 904.32. And my unit is interest cubed. I wanted to round that to the nearest tenth. That becomes 904.3 um, inches cubed. That is that. Okay, so at this point, that's all you have to do. Okay, so it is just a matter of keeping all your numbers straight. Of course, you're going to be using a calculator, so you are in a better position. You make your chance of getting your number uh, or your answer, I'm sorry, correct uh, more so by laying things out methodically as I have putting in the right numbers. You saw how I had to go back and check it because I thought I entered a number wrong. Okay, at any rate, thank you guys for watching my video. If this is something that you uh, are a little confused about, go back over it. Um, you may ask me a question um, during tutorials or um, a different um, time in class, for instance. If you have any additional questions about this, you can also send me a quick message by email. And as always, I will see you guys soon.